Hey guys, welcome to another episode, Swedish Iceman, and today I'm gonna talk about how cold showers affect you. And first off, it's really important to know how cool your water is, because the cooler water you have, actually the more vasoconstriction will occur. And vasoconstriction is when your blood vessels are getting narrower and less blood, blood can flow through them. So when you go into the cold shower and cover your body, in your skin there is shunt veins. And these shunt veins will make blood circulate through your arteries and big veins in your arms and legs, especially in your arms and legs. Because if they keep to the core, to the big central like pipes in your system, you will conserve heat more. But if this shunt vein vasoconstriction doesn't occur, the blood will circulate in your skin also and you will lose heat more. And that's a evolutionary benefit because you can survive longer in, in cool climates. And we, we also have like a shunt vein system in our feet, in our hands. So this, this is a little bit separate from the skin. So like skin, that's like embedded all over your skin. And we also have like a shunt vein system for your fingers. So here in your palm, palm of your hand, you have a shunt vein that goes here. And when you expose your, your hand to cool water, like for a short term, the shunt vein opens up, it dilates. And what that makes is that blood is flowing through your palm of your hand and not through your fingers. Because when you're in, in like a warm water, if you dip down in warm water, the shunt vein will constrict and more blood will go to your hands. Because if it's warm water, the body doesn't have the response to constrict these in the, in the fingers. But if it's cool, your body is trying to conserve heat because your body is trying to save your core, save your body. And it is willing to lose the fingers or your toes for it. And also, if you dip your, your, your face when you're doing a, a shower, you will inflict the mammalian diving reflex. And I have a video about this, so I will link about it and you can go and check it out. Uh, because this is quite a like, it's a advanced phenomena. But what it does is that it further increases this peripheral vasoconstriction. So it further increases the constriction of, of your blood flow through your arms and through your legs. So that more heat will stay in your core. Because if your body is in a cold shower and it's still pumping blood to your arms, you will have more heat loss because your arm is prone to heat loss because it has an, an area. But if, if it saves it, it, it like kind of cuts it off to your arms and your legs, it will only be your core and that's a smaller area because heat loss is dependent on the surface area. So that happens. And also you get um, a decreased cardio output. That means that your, your heart rate will be lower. And I've actually tested this myself. So if I am in a, like a cold bath, it's you, this works best for a cold bath. And I go in there, stay relaxed. And then I immerse with my face under the water. And because I'm in the water, it's, it's really calm and I can only hear my own um, heartbeat through my through my through my ear because I can feel the the blood coming, and I can actually feel how my heart rate is getting decreased. So there's a lot of things that comes into uh, working when you are immersing yourself in a cold shower. And I'm actually writing a book about this and I'm taking some of my material from my book right now. I'm talking about it. Uh, but I don't want to forget to say this, but there's also a lot of changes in hormonal secretion. It's pretty epic. Like actually your testosterone, your free testosterone 
is not changed when you're taking a cold shower. Some people claim that it is, but science proves that it is, it is not decreased or increased by cold showers. Uh, but, but we know from certain experiments that cortisol is elevated when you're doing a cold shower. And, and cortisol is a stress hormone and it's also released during exercise. So it has some connection there. And there's also some uh, hormonal secretions from your pituitary gland. And uh, I know Wim Hof is talking about the pituitary gland. And uh, some of those hormones are increasing and some of those are decreasing. And also from your pancreas, you know, your pancreas secretes insulin or glucagon. And when you're taking a cold shower, your body's insulin remains the same, but your body's glucagon increases because what, what glucagon does, it takes glucose from your uh, glycogen storage. It takes, glu um, yeah, it, it, it takes glu glycogen from, your, from glycogen storage and puts it into your bloodstream because when you go into the cold shower and it's really cold, you start to shiver and when you're shivering, you're creating heat and for and, and that's a movement and that movement requires glucose or glycogen as a form of creating ATP which is the energy to create that muscle con muscle cons uh, constriction contraction muscle contraction sorry so I hope you enjoyed this video and got a little more understanding how cold showers affect your body, how it works. So a little recap, so first you have vasoconstriction in all of your skin, all of your skin because of the small shunt veins. And you also have vasoconstriction because of the big shunt veins in your, in your hands and in your feet. And you also have the mammalian reflex that further enhances the peripheral vasoconstriction. That's your hands and your, your feet, your feet. And you also have uh, lower heart rate because of the mammalian diving reflex. The mammalian diving reflex affects the body in, in many more ways, but you have to watch my other video to, to get that because that's too much for this video. So stay strong guys, jump in some ice cold water and you will understand what I'm talking about. This is uh, an amazing thing and you can use cold showers and ice bath for many many things and it will, it will, it will make your life so much better. Stay strong guys.